Well, welcome everyone. Thank you to both Tim's and Mahela, Fergus, and everyone uh, involved in these uh, the terrific sessions. Actually, um, so I've been asked just to give you a brief introduction on multiomics uh, for those of you who are coming from a non-biology background. Um, and I guess first of all, just to refresh in everyone's minds this concept of information flow in biology. Uh, originally declared by Francis Crick in the 50s, but effectively the information flows from DNA, which is then transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins, and the proteins interact in order to deliver an outcome. And this kind of fundamental process uh, in biology is one of the starting points, if you like, for why we need multiple ways of looking at uh, omics information. So I'll just give you one example of this, which is the impact of DNA mutations. Now you might imagine that they all have effects, but the reality is the vast majority have no effect at all. And so you can see here in these cartoons, the DNA is transcribed. This is the messenger RNA here, and this is the proteins. So as I say, the majority of them have no effect at all. Some of them, however, affect protein quantity. That's to say the amount of RNA and therefore reduced amounts of protein, while others affect protein quality or the function of the proteins. And you can imagine how deconvoluting this becomes relatively straightforward once you have also transcriptomic information uh, about the impact of the mutation on the DNA. Extending this further, you can see that there's a pathway of various steps along the road to get a disease that you can recognize in a patient. So there may be mutations in DNA, there may be alterations in the quality or quantity of RNA, the quality and quantity of the protein, how the protein interact together in networks to give a cellular phenotype, and how those cells interact uh, within an organ uh, to cause organ dysfunction. And that, together with other aspects, can lead to disease presentation in patients. And it's worth reflecting that in addition to the genetic uh, um, uh, mutations that can drive these processes, there are obviously environmental stimuli that can influence any uh, one of these uh, uh, steps as well. And so it's really as a response to this, uh, this these process or this series of processes that lead to disease, uh, that um, the approach of multiomics has become very popular. And it allows you really to interrogate each of these aspects of the disease process and by integrating them, uh, deliver insights into causal factors or mechanisms of disease. So for example, it, it, with a DNA perspective, you can obviously have genomics, that's to say sequencing the whole of the genome uh, at population level in many cases. There is epigenomics that, that uh, allows you to identify DNA modifications or modifications to the histones that bind the DNA, uh, regulating its accessibility. Uh, for transcription. Then there are uh, a number of methods that uh, are used in order to uh, analyze RNA, both in bulk um, at single cell level, and nowadays more uh, increasingly popular uh, spatial methods where you can look at uh, uh, transcriptional profiles in tissues. Then there are proteomic methods, either bulk or uh, uh, in some cases at single cell level, we use mass spectrometry in order to characterize the quantity of, of uh, and modifications of proteins uh, within cells or tissues. Then there are a number of other uh, as, uh, omic uh, uh, modalities that can look at cellular or organ outputs, for example, at the level of metabolomics, these small molecules, uh, and lipidomics, uh, and uh, cytometry, which can done, be done at scale now in order to look at cellular differentiation, numbers of relevant cell types. And so I guess the challenge uh, is how these various modalities can best be integrated, uh, sometimes with missing data from or missing data types, um, in, in order to provide insights into organ level or organism level uh, biology. And I guess Equally, there's the challenge of how you integrate both uh, functional uh, assessments, I'm just showing here an ECG, but it could be anything, uh, or uh, electronic health records, imaging and sensor information uh, to provide useful, actionable intelligence uh, about disease processes. 
So I guess there are a number of potential tasks that you can apply these multi-omic uh, approaches to. And I guess principally they would include causal discovery. Is this DNA uh, mutation relevant? How does it cause disease? The second mechanisms disease, that's to say, can we build an explainable, understandable model of how disease uh, is caused? Uh, in term, thirdly, in terms of biomarker discovery or using it in the kind of biology agnostic way in order to provide prognostic or predictive information. Fourthly, in terms of synthetic biology, that is to say, this is a set of uh, transcriptional signatures that are associated with a cellular fate. If I want a different cellular fate, what would I need to change in those transcriptional profiles to deliver that type of cell? And that's kind of really super exciting kind of uh, uh, up and coming uh, technologies. And finally, the idea that you could use these in order to provide information around drug discovery and drug targets. So, for example, if you understand how certain diseases cause certain, certain cellular responses, you also uh, orthogonally know how certain drugs affect cellular responses. And then you know how certain cellular responses relate to outcomes. You could, in principle, then design a new drug or repurpose a new drug to provide the cellular responses that you want in order to provide the therapeutic benefit uh, uh, that you desire.